Uh, okay, so uh, certificates. Let's uh, remind ourselves about uh, digital certificates or uh, public key certificates or just certificates. Okay, now what information has to be in a digital certificate? Username. Username. Key. And public key. Uh, public key. Okay, username and public key. What else could be in a digital certificate? Lots of other information could be there. In fact, some companies put your phone number, your department, your office. You could put all that kind of garbage in there if you wanted, but at a minimum, it's got to be username, uh, a name, and the corresponding public key. Okay, what else has to be true? Has to be signed by... Has to be signed by who? CA. A CA, a Certificate Authority. Okay, and what does the, what's the purpose of having this thing signed by a Certificate Authority? What does that tell you? It actually tells you two things. Okay, one thing it provides is the authority has given the private key only to the person. Okay, that's the main thing you get out of checking. Okay, by verifying the signature, uh, verifying the you know signature of the CA on that, that CA is vouching for the fact that they generated this key pair. They put the public key here, and the person that's named here got the corresponding private key. So that's really what you find out. But you also, in the process, get an integrity check, okay? Because something could happen, you know, the bits could get messed up, and you can make sure that they're correct by verifying the signature. Okay, why do we need certificates? Why don't I just create my public key, put it on my website, and be done with it? Why do I need a certificate? What if somebody else creates a public key and says it's yours? That's exactly right. Okay, someone else, Trudy could have created that public key, put it on my website, or created a bogus website that looks just like my website, okay, and put the, her, a public key there that she has the corresponding private key to, and, you know, you encrypt data, send it to me, in quotes, right? It gets to Trudy, and she can decrypt it. Okay, so the bottom line here really is it would be nice if we didn't have to trust the CA. <laughs> Right? We don't want to trust anybody, okay, if we don't have to. But you're just stuck. You have to trust somebody, okay? And so the CA is playing that trusted role in the whole system here. Okay. Now, another question. So, okay, so we get all this stuff. This is the way we set up the signature. We have the name and the public key, maybe some other information. Uh, that's signed by a CA, and that's the stuff that goes into the certificate. Okay, now how do you verify? Well, of course, you apply the CA's public key to this guy and make sure that it matches what's here. If those two things match, you get the integrity check, and you also get this vouching for the private key being in the right hands. Okay, now suppose I'm lazy. Okay, I get digital certificates all the time, and it's a lot of work. And it's not a lot. It's some work to verify these signatures, and I just don't want to do that. It's too much work. Okay, so I don't bother to verify the signature on this certificate. What could go wrong? Well, if nothing can go wrong, let's don't do it. It's a waste of time, right? Somebody else may sign it. Okay, so what can happen? Uh, there could be an integrity problem, right? I mean, you, this is sent to you by somebody, so the bits could have gotten changed. And you may actually have a valid certificate, but you're using the wrong public key, so the person won't be able to decrypt anyway, okay, because of a problem in transmission. Okay, but what else? What? Somebody could be then to be the CA. Somebody could pretend, okay? Trudy could make this whole thing up, right? Trudy can write Alice. Trudy can make a public and private key pair, and she can call that Alice's public key, and she can keep the private key for herself. What about this signature by the CA? Well, I don't check it anyway, so Trudy could sign it herself, right? Or she, you know, or just leave it blank, right? I'm not checking it. Okay, so the point is, if it's not signed, or you don't check the certificate, or you don't trust the CA, uh, you know, don't use it, okay, don't accept that certificate. Okay, <laughs> only bad things could ensue. Uh, okay, so the CA is this trusted third party. We really are trusting the CA. I mean, think about it. If the CA is Trudy, the whole thing's broken, because Trudy's keeping a copy of the private key for herself and is decrypting everything, you know, uh, that she wants. Okay, so we really have to trust the CA is doing the right thing because they're creating the certificates, they're signing them, they're vouching for the private keys, getting in the right hands, all that stuff. Now, this is kind of the subtle, or a subtle point here. Yes? Sorry, signing means they encrypt the whole thing, <coughs> private key, or does it mean they just encrypt something at the bottom? 
Yeah. That's a good. Maybe you could sign it with a different um, key if, she, if you don't check the signature, but wouldn't you have to, if it, the whole thing's encrypted, wouldn't you have to? Well, okay, we've sort of got two pieces, right? Whenever we're verifying the signature, we need the original message and then we need the signed message because we'll apply the public key to this guy, right? And we can verify that we get the right thing by comparing it to this. Okay, so if you don't have the, you know, the correct private key, you know, VeriSign's private key or whatever, you can't do that signature. And anybody can verify it because everybody can get VeriSign's public key. Okay. So, does that answer the question? I'm not sure how many people do it. <laughs> okay, anyway, it's worth really sitting down and thinking about these things, okay, because there are some subtle issues that come up. And here, here's one. Okay, now when you verify the signature, it tells you what? Assuming you trust the CA that signed it, it tells you that the corresponding private key really belongs to the person named in this certificate, okay? Because keys come in pairs, they put the public key here, they gave the private key to the correct person. The thing it does not tell you is anything about who sent you the certificate. It's a public key certificate, and public keys are, by definition, public, okay? So anybody can have the certificate. Trudy can have Alice's certificate, Trudy can have Bob's certificate, Trudy can have everybody in the world's certificate because they're public information. Trudy could send Alice's certificate to you and say, hey, I'm Alice, you know, you, you know, encrypt your secret messages and send them to me. Okay, you don't do that because until you're sure it really is Alice. So we can use the public key, you know, the certificate to determine whether it's really Alice or not, but that's protocols and that's a couple chapters away. We have to do some work point is just receiving the certificate alone is not enough, okay? All right. Uh, and as we mentioned, there's problems if the SCA makes a mistake, and you should at least have heard of this X.509. We're not going to say any more about it. Okay, so any questions about certificates? Uh, okay, public key infrastructure. Uh, the idea here is that we need some structure if we're going to use uh, public and private keys. First of all, we have to have a CA, right? CA has to generate the key pairs, they have to give the keys to the correct person, they have to create certificates and all that sort of stuff. So we need that. Um, so that's a, at a minimum, we need a, a certificate authority. We do have to have, as was mentioned at the start, we have to have some way to revoke certificates, okay? Uh, and typically, uh, these are called certificate revocation lists, CRLs. And again, that's distributed or it could be available, you know, maybe you go to Verisign's website and you look up revoke certificate, you know, something like that. There's some way to access that information. Okay. Uh, there is no sort of general standard for PKI, you know, different uh, uh, approaches are proposed once in a while and different approaches and different systems are, are actually used, okay, so uh, there's no universal agreed upon standard. So we're just going to mention kind of high level uh, look at three different uh, trust models, okay? So these are kind of the most uh, sort of basic way that you could set these things uh, up, I guess. But before we get to that, I do want to do one more thing. Uh, okay, I just wanted to show you uh, some uh, certificates, okay? You can look these up. You can go, I, I don't know, it depends on your system, but in, in the Mac, there's this keychain access, so you can go and you can look up all of your certificates. So here, I'm looking up certificates. Okay. Now, if you just look here, these are certificates I have. The point is, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so I've got quite a few. And you see several here for VeriSign, right? Okay, now, they uh, have different classes of certificates. Uh, so this is a class three certificate. Uh, it just means they're used for different purposes. Okay, that, that's all. Um, but anyway, it's going through the various information here. Uh, tells you how things are signed. Uh, what else is interesting here? Well, okay, you can actually see the public key here, okay, and by public key, well, they also have exponent here. What's the heck's going on? What, what do they mean by public key, then? Uh, 
What? RSA. Okay, what did we call it? We do RSA. This is RSA. Okay, tell us it's using RSA up there somewhere. Okay, so what's the public key in RSA? N and E. N and E, okay. Well, this is what? N. This is N. Okay, this is E, the exponent. Okay, what is E here? To the 16 plus 1. Okay, so E is easy. E is always to the 16 plus 1. All right, so the only thing you really care about is the public key, all right? So, if I, I mean, is in, which is the public key uh, in their terminology. Uh, okay, then various stuff here about the, you know, the signature, so this is the sign value, and you can compare, okay? All right, so it's all there. Now, other stuff related to this key, let's see what I want to say here. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, trust. Okay, so you can go up here and you can choose all these settings. You can say whether I trust this certificate or even if I do trust it, I can limit it, I can restrict what it can be used for. All that st sort of stuff is you can tune, I mean, you can set for yourself. Okay? Of course, you all do this, right? <laughs> all right. You can do that. It's probably too much uh, trouble for most people to bother to do, but it's possible. 